the fabulous author Zadie Smith wrote of an experience in the London nightclub in 1999. She was wandering around, searching for her friends, wondering where her handbag was, when suddenly a tribe called Quest came on. At that moment, she wrote, a rail-thin man with enormous eyes reached out across a sea of bodies for my hand. He kept asking me the same thing over and over and over. You feeling it? You feeling it? I was, she recalls. My ridiculous heels were killing me. I was terrified I might die. Yet I felt simultaneously overwhelmed with delight that Can I Kick It should happen to be playing at this precise moment in the history of the world and was now morphing into Nirvana's Smells Like Teen Spirit. I took the man's hand, the top of my head flew away, we danced, we gave ourselves up to joy. In your presence is the fullness of joy, the psalm writer sings, joy and blessedness forever and ever, an invitation across millennia, a hand reaching out, inviting us to a dance as ancient as time itself. You feeling it? The practice of being present to God may be in giving ourselves to an experience of euphoric joy like Zadie's, or may happen in shades more subtle. You are my food, my drink, my sunlight, the air I breathe. Wherever and however it happens, the writer seems to insist it is through ordinary, everyday life that the holy is present and known. What a wonderful world, indeed. I feel you with me every moment, they continue. You are the ground I've built on. Some 2,500 years after these words, the great theologian Paul Tillich would suggest that God is the ground of all being. A, re a reality as present and close as the air we breathe. And it may be why the Quran can so beautifully claim, whichever way we may turn, there is the face of God. Prayer, then, may be far simpler than we've made it. Prayer, according to Brother David Steindl Roth, is waking up to the presence of God no matter where we are, or what we are doing. When we are fully alert to whatever, whoever is right in front of us, when we are electrically aware of the tremendous gift of being alive, when we give ourselves wholly to the moment we are in, then we are in prayer. Prayer is happening, in other words, and it is not necessarily something that we are doing. God is happening. And we are lucky enough to know that we are in the midst, or in the groove, if you will. Are we feeling it? To an unnameable God, the poet addresses their verses. It reminds me of the Upanishads, where God is described as, Thou before whom all words recoil. How good is that? Thou before whom all words recoil. All our language of God is inadequate. Despite our best metaphors, the reality of God will eclipse even our best words. The only reality we can describe with any accuracy is our own experience of God and what we imagine of God. To call God unnameable then, is to me not evidence of naive faith, but quite the opposite. It reflects a mature, abiding trust in a mystery that is infinitely knowable, infinitely unfolding and changing, even as our lives unfold and change. The sacred always resists whatever theological box we've constructed. 
Yes, our language is limited, but while our, while our words fail, they also illuminate and heal and help us touch a little bit more of the mystery. And to give expression and therefore meaning is a vital part of being human. We may experience the divine in the sunset or at a body of water or on a mountainside or in a sense of belonging we feel to something greater than ourselves. God may seem to inhabit the atmosphere when we experience the depths of feelings like reverence and awe and love or when we enter this space or observe our pets or cook a meal for others. Some of you have shared about your experiences at rock bottom where the unnameable had never felt closer and you realized you weren't alone. I experience the divine regularly in music, in inspired words or some unexpected artistic expression from the core of someone's being. I experience the divine in strangers whose kindness or humor or wisdom lights a room or when I am living purposefully with generosity and compassion, when I am willing to honor the sacredness and insist upon the dignity of all. Annie Dillard wrote, we are here to witness the creation and to abet it. We are here to notice each thing so that each thing gets noticed. Together we notice not only each mountain shadow and each stone on the beach, but especially we notice the beautiful faces and complex natures of each other. Otherwise, creation would be playing to an empty house. It echoes a homiletics professor I had in seminary who said that the best advice he could give any preacher is to live deeply. It's indispensable advice, I think, for creating lives of meaning, too. Live deeply, which may mean simply being intentionally present to people and common things and ordinary moments whose hands sometimes extend to us with questions that may set us free. Maybe all matter is simply a hiding place for the presence of God wherein lies the possibility of joy. Fascinating that in these examples of being present to the divine, we find answers to the question of contemporary psalmist Billy Eilish, whose question Ianthi sang, what was I made for? The psalms are full of these kinds of questions. If we ever need words for our rage, lament, frustration, or feelings of futility, loneliness, and despair, go to the Psalms. In giving voice to these feelings, even when they are shouted into the void and met with non-responsive silence, people paradoxically have found the divine present in their pain. We read hints of it in Psalm 16. I give thanks to you at all times for lifting me from my confusion, for teaching me in the dark, and showing me the path of life. When I first read that this week, I said, at all times, really? Yes, they give thanks for the stuff they've made it through, understanding in hindsight how they had experienced God as a steady presence through it all. But the present tense, I give thanks, also suggests to me a preemptive gratitude for what is yet to be. I was moved this week reading Barbara Brown Taylor's reflection on this kind of gratitude. She writes, I am willing to thank my partner for a gift even before I have opened it, because I know him, because I trust his love of me, because I have faith we will survive no matter the gift. I am willing to thank God for my life even before how I know how it turns out. This is brave talk I know while I can still pay the bills, walk without assistance, and talk someone into going to the movies. My hope, she continues, 
is that if I can practice saying thank you now, when I still approve of most of what is happening to me, then perhaps that practice will have become habit by the time I do not like much of anything that is happening to me. The plan is to replace approval with gratitude. The plan is to take what is as God's ongoing answer to me. This week, driving out to Idlewild to enjoy the holiday, we passed no less than five signs telling travelers that prayer changes things. While their designers would likely disagree with me that I don't believe prayer changes God or God's mind, perhaps we might find agreement that the practice of prayer or the practice of being present to God changes us. If God is the ground of all being and that ground is love, it's difficult to believe that the will of God for the world and all creation is anything but love. Love as wholeness, love as peace, as justice, love as being fully present, love as joy, love as the delight in the unique particularities of each other and all the holy has loved into being. What was I made for? Love. To know its fullness, to experience its fullness, and to share its fullness. Endless are this world's reminders. Endless its possibilities for the practice of and participation in love. I have come to the center of the universe, sings the poet, and I rest in your perfect love. This verse reminded me of Rupert Spira's words. Our longing for God is God's love for us. It is the gravitational pull of our being, inviting us to return from the adventure of experience to the sanctuary of the heart. Our longing never finds what it is looking for. It comes to rest in it. The psalmist knew it and how they can sing, in your presence there is fullness of joy forever and ever. Joy in the euphoric, ecstatic sense to be sure. Joy, that mysterious force that seems to bend the space-time continuum when on the dance floor or in the presence of good friends and family lost in profound conversation or in uncontrollable laughter that takes over any ability to feel anything else or be anywhere else but joy also as the refusal to be anything less than fully human. Joy as the unwillingness to be capsized by the storms of our day and time. A refusal to let the altars of our hearts be overwhelmed by the floodwaters of cruelty and foolishness. Joy as the quiet or sometimes loud resistance when circumstances and people might cause us to lose ourselves and our love and meet that cruelty and foolishness with more of the same. Joy is steadfastly showing up, speaking up, and singing truth in love. Joy is the tie that binds in the eye of the storm when all is chaos. Joy is why we do life together, because life together is joy. And we hold joy for others in community when they cannot. And we know that they too will hold it for us when we cannot. This free exchange holds us in every struggle, even the unimaginable. And this is what makes community sacred knowing our liberation is tied together as individuals, as a church, as a country, and as a world. Joy awakens us to the sacred in all and shows us where dignity and freedom and personhood are denied. 
and says it is precisely in these places that we will come face to face with the holy. Joy awakens us to the beauty that rejoices our hearts and will move us to see all life flourish the same. Joy is subversive and may just change the way we live or eat or vote because we have others in mind. Joy may change where we direct our precious time and energies and resources. Joy says, get ready to be surprised where you might find yourself co-mingled with spirit, co-creating something new, present face-to-face with love in all its sacred colors and hues. The practice of being present to God is the practice of being present to our lives. That this song should be playing at this precise moment in the history of the world. In your presence is fullness of joy and blessedness forever and ever and ever. You feeling it?